You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Platinum Card Service, Rebecca speaking. How may I help you? I've got a few problems with my credit card account. Okay, what is your credit card number?、Mm, let's see, it's here somewhere. Ah, here it is. Can I just take the card number, please? Yes, it's six double nine two. Six double nine two. Three double four three. Three double four three. Double one four seven. Double one four seven. Eight nine two one. Eight nine two one, right. Can I just check that? Um, six double nine two, three double four three, double one four seven, eight nine two one. That's it. And your name? Carlos de Silva. I just need to check a few details for identification and security, if you'll bear with me. That's okay. And what's your postcode? S E one, eight P B. S E one eight P B. That's it. Foxhall Close, London. Yes, that's right. And the house number. Um, forty three. And can you give me your date of birth? Thirteenth of the seventh, sixty three. And one further check, if I may. Can you give me your mother's maiden name? Yes, it's Moore. Is that M double O R E? Yes, that's it. Before the caller and operator continue their telephone conversation, look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the next part of the conversation and answer questions six to ten. For these questions, there are three alternatives: A, B, and C. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Yes. Now, can we get on with this? Yes, sir. Certainly. I'm sure you'll appreciate that all these checks are necessary for security reasons. So, what exactly is the problem? Problems. Okay. Well, first,、um, your computer seems to have gone mad. I sent you five hundred pounds, and on the statement for the account, it shows that I only paid three hundred. Yes, the account does only show three hundred pounds was paid. Well. I paid the five hundred pounds in at the bank, and I have my receipt. And my bank statement shows that five hundred pounds has been taken from my account. Oh, I see. What I'll do is check with the bank and see what they say. Okay. You said there was something else. Yes, as if that wasn't enough. My account shows that a hundred and seven pounds twenty-seven was paid to a company called Pan Express. I don't know who this is. Let's have a look. Well, it is genuine. I can assure you, it's not mine. It was made on the evening of the twelfth of May. Maybe it's a restaurant bill you forgot about. There's no way that. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Yes. Oh, it's okay. I've just realised what it is. It is a restaurant bill. Um, the name of the company is different from the name of the restaurant. My mistake. I'm sorry. That's okay. Was there anything else? I don't know if I dare. What is it anyway? Um. Well, it's um. The amount of interest seems to have gone up. Hmm. If you look at your statement for April, you'll see that the rate went down from sixteen point two seven percent to fourteen point nine nine percent that month. Oh yes, you're right. Was that everything? Yes, basically it is. Okay. And can you check my payment? Oh yes, I'll do it. Can I phone you back? 
I'll be at home for the next two hours. I have to leave at eleven. Right. What's your number? O two o seven nine eight nine seven one eight two. Hold on. O two o seven nine seven nine. No, it's seven nine eight nine, and then seven one eight two. So it's o two o seven nine eight nine. Seven one eight two. Yes, that's it. Okay, I'll phone you straight back. Thanks. Bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You'll hear part of a free class about safety around campus. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fourteen. Good evening. I'm Geoffrey Miller from the University of Nottingham Student Union, and in this week's free class, Carlos Garcia is going to tell us about safety around campus. Over to you, Carlos. Thank you, Geoffrey, and thank you all for your attendance today. Also, I'd like to thank the student union here at the university for organising this lecture. Well, I've been serving and protecting the city of Nottingham for over twenty years now as a member of the police department. Does anyone know what type of crime is the most prevalent on campus? I heard someone say drugs and alcohol. That actually isn't too much of an issue. Violence? Nope. Actually. The biggest thing we worry about here is theft. The nature of crime on Nottingham's campus is quite different from that of the surrounding areas. Crime rates across the East Midlands are very difficult to control. We'd like to see the rates stay the same for this calendar year, but it has been increasing steadily over the past three years. On campus, however, I'm happy to say that the overall crime rate has fallen this year. You wouldn't think so if you've seen the extremely exaggerated stories in the media. The media has done nothing but cause more concern about crime in our area. Even the crime shows you see today are a little bit far-fetched, but at least viewers know they're not real events. We'd really like to see more factual news articles out there, so the public can have a rational sense of the safety level of our society. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions fifteen to twenty. Okay, let's move on to what to do when you see a crime. Do not get involved, if at all possible, and do not draw too much attention to yourself by running away in a conspicuous manner. Though most likely, and hopefully, you will not have to experience this situation. If you are being mugged, please do not try to resist. Instead, be compliant and seek help after the incident. Like I said, though, it is highly unlikely. 
that you will find yourself amidst a crime. But it is important to be prepared should it ever happen. We find that educating students and staff on the correct precautions to take is the best way to increase your safety. Just remember to be smart when you're out late at night and avoid any area or person that looks suspicious. I know it sounds obvious, but I cannot stress this enough. It's also not a bad idea to have your mobile phone with you at all times, but be careful. If you're chatting on your smartphone on your way home, you're a prime target for thieves. I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people have left work or the library after 10 p.m. to go home before? A lot of you, right? If you do have to go home late at night, please don't walk home alone. More often than not, there's someone there that will be walking the same direction as you at some point. Walk home with a friend or co-worker, even if you must use your phone to call someone that's nearby to walk with you. It's always safer to walk home with someone. So when you're walking home, you may feel more comfortable with some sort of self-defense, such as pepper spray. Now. It's your call whether you want to carry something like this or not. However, I absolutely advise against carrying a knife or any other offensive weapon. All too often, they can be used against you if you're disarmed, putting yourself in more danger. For all those interested, the Recreation Center offers a free self-defense class to all students every Thursday evening. While obviously an introductory self-defense class may not equip you to fight off villains like a regular superhero, it does come in handy sometimes. After taking a self-defense class, you'll surely be more aware of possible dangers and how to deal with them. So hopefully now you have a more complete understanding of the nature of crimes committed on your campus and how to avoid being a victim. I know most students at the University of Nottingham are not the criminal types, but remember that there is no barrier like a wall or something keeping non-students out. There's no army force securing the borders, and I doubt anyone wants it that way. The campus is generally a safe place. But it's not immune to small crimes once in a while. All right, that's all I have to say for today. Stay safe. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students, Sharon and Zhao Li, talking to their tutor about a presentation they gave the previous week. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-three. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-three. So, Sharon and Zhao Li, in your presentation last week, you were talking about the digital divide, the gap between those who can effectively use communication tools such as the internet and those who can't, and you compared the situation here in Northern Ireland with Southeast China. Right. So. I asked you to do some self-evaluation, watching the video of your presentation and thinking about the three main criteria you're assessed by: content, structure, and technique. What do you think was the strongest feature of the presentation when you watched it,、uh, Sharon? 
Well, I was surprised actually because I felt quite nervous. But when I watched the video, it didn't show as much as I expected. So, which of the criteria would that come under? Uh, confidence. Mm, that's not actually one of the criteria as such. Jolly. Technique. It's body language and eye contact, isn't it? Well, I didn't think I looked all that confident, but I think that our technique was generally good, like the way we designed and used the PowerPoint slides.、Hmm. So you both feel happiest about that side of the presentation. Yeah.、Hmm. Okay.、Uh, now on the negative side,、uh, what would you change if you could do it again? Well, at first I'd thought that the introduction was going to be the problem. But actually, I think that was okay. We defined our terms and identified key issues. It was more towards the end. The conclusion wasn't too bad, but the problem was the questions.、Mm. We hadn't really expected there'd be any, so we hadn't thought about them that much.、Uh -huh. Okay.、Uh, anything else? Well, like Zhao Li says, I thought the conclusion was okay, but when I watched us on the video. I thought the section on solutions seemed rather weak.、Hmm. Can you think why? Well, we explained what people are doing about the digital divide in China and Northern Ireland, but I suppose we didn't really evaluate any of the projects or ideas. It was just a list, and that was what people were asking us about at the end, mostly. You now have some time to look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-four to thirty. Okay. Now I also asked you to get some peer evaluation from the other students. Yes.、Uh, well, people said it was interesting, like the fact that in China the internet was used more for shopping than in Northern Ireland. They said sometimes it was a bit hard to understand because we were talking quite fast. But we didn't think so when we watched the video. No, it's a bit different though, because you know all this information already.、Mm. If you're hearing it for the first time, you need more time to process it. That's why signposting the structure and organisation of the talk is important. That seemed okay. No one mentioned that as a problem. Some people said that we could have had more on the slides, like some of the other groups had nearly everything they said written up on the visuals as well.、Mm. But other people said the slides were good; they had just the key points. Yes. And most people said we had quite good eye contact and body language. They all pointed out we'd overrun. They all said we were five minutes over, but we timed it afterwards on the video, and it was only three minutes. We were a bit unsure about the background reading at first, but I think we did as much as we could in the time. Anyway, no one commented on that under content. But one thing that did come out was that they liked the fact we'd done research on both Northern Ireland and China. Most other people had just based their research on one country. We managed to get quite a lot of data from the internet, although we had to do our own analysis, and we did our own surveys as well in both countries. So the class gave us best feedback for content, but it was all okay. Right. Well, that's quite similar to the feedback I'm giving you. I was very impressed by the amount of work you had done and by your research methodology. So actually, I'm giving you full marks for content. Five.、Oh. <laughs> the structure of the presentation was good, but not quite as good as the content. So I gave that four, and the same for technique. So well done. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Now the next stage is to write up your report. So just a few pointers for you here. First of all, in your presentation, I think your ending was rather abrupt. You suddenly just stopped talking.、Yeah. It wasn't a big problem, but think about your closing sentences in your report. You want to、uh, round it off well.、Mm. 
one thing I forgot to mention earlier was that I felt a very strong point was that after you'd given your results, you explained their limitations. The fact that we didn't have a very reliable sample in terms of age in China. Yes, that section. So don't forget to include that. And you had some excellent charts and diagrams. But maybe you could flesh out the literature review a bit. I can give you some ideas for that later on if you want. OK,、uh, is there anything else you want to ask? No, no, thank you. Thanks. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear an introduction about an eco-friendly building called the Gherkin. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Today, I'd like to tell you about how UK architects are playing their part to address the issue of global warming. You have seen many of these iconic buildings while going about your everyday life, but you may not know how they are affecting your tomorrow. In two thousand and three. Construction was completed on the famous Swiss Rebuilding, or more informally called the Gherkin, a true masterpiece commissioned by the law offices of Foster and Partners. This is not the first ambitious endeavour of the firm; they are renowned for their various philanthropic environmental efforts. The Gherkin, with its cutting-edge green initiative and sharp design, is gaining recognition as an icon in modern architecture. You can pick it out of the London skyline by its unorthodox cigar shape. While its appearance is the obvious attribute at which to marvel, there is far more to this building than meets the eye. And let's face it, there's a lot about this building that meets the eye. The building helps reduce the city's carbon footprint in a number of ways. Just a quick note: in case you're not familiar with the term carbon footprint, get used to it. It's a buzzword you'll hear relentlessly to talk about reducing emissions. Think of it as the amount of harmful greenhouse gases that are given off into the environment by a single person, organization, or product. So, going back to the Gherkin building, perhaps the most obvious as well as the most significant eco-friendly feature is the glass windows, which allow light to pass through the building, both reducing heating costs and brightening up the workspace. The ingenuity behind the various eco-friendly aspects of the Gherkin has seen its fair share of publicity, both from serious and silly sources. In a recent April Fool's Day edition, one e-publication printed a story detailing plans to replace 50% of the current exterior with grass, which would not only make large steps in the name of sustainability. But also give the building the green hue that would truly earn it the nickname of the Gherkin. The only drawback is, as you may have guessed, that this story was an April Fool's Day joke and completely made up. In all seriousness, though, 
the building is setting a new standard of design that other architects and city planners just cannot ignore. The building's bold and cost-efficient design has won a number of architecture awards, including the Sterling Prize, the London Region Award, and the Empress Skyscraper Award, among others. The design comfortably accommodates a large number of offices, while keeping maintenance and operation costs down, striking a superb balance between nature and the workplace. Nature is well and good, as long as the weather is nice outside. Given London's notoriously bad weather, the architects knew they must devise a quality temperature regulation system, and that they did. A special system designed to reduce the building's reliance on air conditioning was devised that cuts consumption in half compared to standard office buildings. There are atria that link each floor vertically to one another, forming spiraling spaces of the entire building. They serve not just as social common spaces, but also act as the building's lungs, distributing clean air from the opening panels in the facade through the entire building. The building isn't all business though. It has its fair share of fun as well. At the very top, a club room offers a picturesque entertainment spot for company functions, private parties, etc. with a breathtaking panoramic view of the city. The creation of such an innovative structure has many wondering what the future of urban planning and architecture may be. Well, if the other projects currently commissioned by Foster and Partners are any indication, the entire city constructed with similarly eco-friendly buildings is not far in the distance. The Mazda City development aims to create a desert city that produces zero waste and removes as much carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as it puts in, a huge feat in protecting our Earth. The Gherkin is a truly impressive feat, yet it is not the only one worth noting. Now to move on to another green initiative, I'll tell you about the Eden Foundation building found in Cornwall. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.